Hey everyone, this is 13.2, Complements and Unions. Um, so we're going to talk about a little bit of basic set theory here, and uh, we're going to start with complements. And um, <clears throat> the notation for this, uh, if E is an event, this little E prime stands for E complement. Sometimes if you see like older notation, um, or just different notation, there might be like a little C up here, but I think for all of our course and my math labs and everything, you'll see the, the prime. So um, E prime or E complement, this is red is all the ways E cannot occur. Um, and so, if you, let's say you're rolling a dice and your event is rolling a 3, right? Well, that would be E, and E complement would be all the other numbers, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. So it's literally just all the ways your event, the complete opposite of your event. Um, e and E complement make up the entire sample space, because if you think about the dice example, you either roll a 3 or you roll something else, right, on the dice, the, the 1, 2, 4, 5, uh, and six. There are no other outcomes. So we use this to our advantage, um, kind of like this. Let me show you a picture to go with that. Picture this box as our entire sample space. These are all the possible outcomes of our experiment, whatever it might be. E is our event. Everything outside of E, everything else in the sample space, is E complement. So obviously, E plus E complement is the entire sample space. It makes up the entire thing. So if you want to find the probability um, or, or using probabilities, we know that the probability of E plus the probability of E complement is equal to 1. Right? Basically, that just says you're guaranteed to land either in E or outside of E. There is no other place, right, because we're, we're living inside this universe, inside the sample space. So this version of the formula is true, but it's not that useful. These are the useful versions. What this says is, let's say you want to find the pro uh, probability of some event. If you know the probability of its complement, um, you can take 1, subtract off the probability of the complement, and that will give you the probability of E. Notice this formula right here we get from up here. Picture this formula, subtract P of E prime from both sides, it'll go over here, so it'll go away over here, it'll move over here, and it'll be 1 minus P of E, e complement. Alright, so all you do is you subtract this from both sides, you get this formula. Similarly, let's say you want to know the probability of the complement, and you have the probability of the event itself. Well, we know that the probability of the complement equals 1 minus the probability of the event. Same thing up here. Um, this time we're solving for this piece. So you subtract off the P of E. It goes over here. And that's how you get this formula. All right. so just keep, keep in mind an event and its complement make up the entire sample space. So if you have one of the pieces, right, you can always find the other using 1 minus the piece that you have. All right, so a basic little example here. Um, this is from uh, page 665, number 2. If the probability that a vaccine you took will protect you from getting the flu um, is 0.965, what is the probability that you will get the flu? So this is pretty basic, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of outline it in some detail for you um, with some events. So let's let F be the event of getting the flu. That means F prime or F complement um, would be the event not getting the flu. Right, so obviously we know that there is no other option here, right? You either get it or you don't. So um, we know that, uh, well, what do we want? We want the probability that you will get the flu. So we want to figure out what's the probability of F. Well, we know by that formula that I just gave you, the probability of F will be equal to 1 minus the probability of F complement, or F prime. Um, and we know probability of F prime, right? It says uh, F prime is the event of not getting the flu. It tells us that if you take the vaccine, it will protect you from getting the flu. That's not getting the flu, obviously, um, at a rate of 0.965. So this will just be 1 minus 0.965. And that will give us 0 0.035. So this is the probability of F, which is the probability of getting the flu. And it comes out to 0 0.035. Right, so this is kind of basic because they basically just give you one of them. You want the other one, so you just do one minus it. But hopefully this makes some sense with the formulas and the events. Here we let F be the event getting the flu. The opposite of that would be not getting the flu, right, F, F prime. We want to find the probability of F because they're asking us what's the probability that you will get the flu. That is F. So the probability of F equals, by our complement formula, 1 minus the probability of the complement. 
they give us the compliment right here, right? This will protect you from getting the flu. That means you won't get the flu. Um, that probability of F prime right there is the point, sorry, the 0 0.965. 1 minus that gives you 0 0.035. Same page, number 7. This time it says if five coins are flipped, what is the probability of obtaining at least one head? Um, I'll give you a hint. Anytime you ever see at least in a probability problem, sorry, I shouldn't say every time, often when you see um, at least in a probability um, problem, it, may, it means you need to consult the complement. Because if you think about this, you're flipping five coins. Obtaining at least one head is a very complicated event because there's several different ways you could do it. You could literally get one head in all the different ways you can do that, but you could also um, get two heads in all the different ways you could do that. Three heads, four heads, five heads, right? Um, so that is a very complicated event. The good thing is the complement of it is not complicated. What's the complement of at least one head? Well, that would be no heads, and no heads is the same thing as all tails. And that's a very straightforward event, and there's actually just one way to do it. So I would start this problem, actually I would start this problem by figuring out um, what are the total number of outcomes? Because we're going to have to do probability anyways. So let's throw a quick slot method in there. Five coins, five slots. Each one could be heads or tails, so two outcomes. That's two to the fifth, which is 32. All right, so keep in mind real quick in the back of our heads, there are 32 possible outcomes when you flip five coins. Now for our events, let's just use A. A will be the event of getting at least one head. That's what we're trying to find the probability of. But I told you that instead of tackling that directly, let's talk about the complement. So the opposite of getting at least one head would be getting no heads. And keep in mind, no heads is actually the same thing as all tails. And that is a nice straightforward um, event. So we want to know the probability of A. And by our complement formula, it will be equal to 1 minus the probability of A complement. So now our last question is, what is the probability of A complement? Well, A complement is the event of getting no heads. So the probability of it is the number of ways you can get no heads divided by the total number of outcomes. We already figured out the total number of outcomes. It was 32, right? 2 to the 5th. So how many ways can you get no heads? Well, no heads is the same thing as all tails, and there's only one way you can do that. You literally get tails, 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 tails. I think that was five. Five tails. So there's one way you can get no tails. Sorry, sorry, all tails, which is no heads. Um, and when you subtract this, you get 31 out of 32. Right? What this also means is out of those 32 outcomes, um, if you were to answer this problem directly, you would hit, literally have to list out or count up all of the ways to get at least one head, and there would be 31 ways, right? You can get one head, two heads, three heads, four heads, or five heads, and all the different ways you can shuffle around the heads and tails and everything. So this is a lot more straightforward if you look at the complement in which there's only one way to do it, and then you just do one minus that, and you get your outcome, or sorry, your probability. All right, so that was complements. We'll talk a little bit about unions, um, and again, some basic set theory here. Um, so this is A union B, this big U just stands for union, and this means everything in A or B. Um, what that kind of means is you're taking all of A and all of B and you're just putting it all together. So here I'm going to shade um, A union B. So it's all of A, it's the middle part, and all of B. There you go. That is A union B. Um, let's talk about intersections. Intersections, um, similar notation to unions. We have A intersect B. It's kind of an upside down U this time. So it's read A intersect B. And it stands for everything A and B have in common. So again, I will shade A intersect B for you. There it is. It's the overlap, right? It's everything that's both in A and B at the same time. All right, so we're going to focus on unions for this one. And we're going to talk about finding the probability of a union. And it turns out this is your formula. Probability of A union B equals, this is a very useful formula, something you should probably write on a note card, probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. Now let's talk a little bit about this formula because it actually makes a lot of sense. We already know that A union B is all of A and all of B, this whole thing shaded in. And if you want to find the probability of line in here, well it makes sense. You take the probability of A, which is all of A, 
you add the probability of B, which is all of B. Now here's the problem with that. This piece in the middle, you just added twice. Because it's there when you add all of A, there it is. And it's there when you add all of B, there it is. Right? So since you added it twice, your probability, if you were to leave off this last piece, just this piece here, your probability is bigger than it should be, because you added a piece twice. So to balance it out, you subtract off that piece that you added twice. So this piece that we added twice is called the intersection, so we have a subtract off the intersection. All right, so that's all. That's all the formula says, basically. Very useful formula, pretty easy to use. Um, just a quick note, this is kind of a, um, a special case that you, I don't think you actually even see it very often, but it should, we should talk about it briefly. Um, what if you have a set, uh, situation like this? Well, probability of A and B, see how they don't have anything in common? They don't have an intersection? So this time you can just say probability of A union B equals the probability of A, Plus the, plus the probability of B, because you haven't added anything twice. We call these sets mutually exclusive, just a fancy way of saying they don't have anything in common. So in this case, like I said, if your events, A and B are events, remember, if they are mutually exclusive, it, meaning if they can never happen at the same time or they don't have anything in common, we say that the probability of A union B is just the probability of A plus the probability of B, and that's because the intersection in this case is just equal to zero. So it's kind of a special case. Um, like I said, I don't think you'll see it, but you should probably know about it anyways. All right, let's use this um, formula, page 665, number 9. It says if a single card is drawn from a standard 52-card deck, what is the probability that is either a 5 or a red card? Let's um, name some events just to make this a little bit easier to write. Let's let F equal um, drawing a 5. And let's let R equal drawing a red card. So these are events. And what we're being asked to find in this problem is the probability of F union R. The order doesn't matter in this case. Probability of R union F would be the same thing, by the way. So don't worry too much about that. Um, according to our formula, we know that the probability of a union is the probability of the first one, probability of F, plus the probability of the second one, probability of R, minus the probability of the intersection. That's F intersects R. Okay? And now we just have to go through and figure out what are these probabilities. So let's start with the probability of F. What's the probability of drawing a 5? Well, basic probability again. It's the number of ways that event can occur divided by the total number of outcomes when you draw a card. So if we're drawing a card, we want to see what's the probability that it's a 5. There are four 5s in the deck, right? There's the 5 of hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. And um, uh, so there's four of them. And divided by the total number of outcomes, well, when you draw a card in general, there's 52 cards you could, could get. So the probability of drawing a 5 is just 4 out of 52. Same idea with red cards. Keep in mind, half the deck is red, right? The spades and clubs are black, and the hearts and diamonds are red. So if they want the probability of a red card, half the deck, which is 26 cards, there are 26 different red cards you could choose. So 26 ways it could happen, divided by 52, because again, 52 possible cards you can get. All right, so that's, again, basic probability. That part should be uh, basically a review from 13.1. Now, what's the probability of F intersect R? Well, what is F intersect R? These are cards that are both in F, meaning that they're fives, and in R, meaning that they're red cards. So this is literally, and I'm going to kind of make a note, note for you, um, this event, F intersect R, are the red fives. Right? That's what it means to be in both sets. It means they're both fives and red cards at the same time. So how many of those are there? Well, there's a red 5 that's the 5 of diamonds, and a red 5 that's the 5 of hearts. So there's two of them. So there are two red 5s. So you have a 2 out of 52 chance of drawing one of those red 5s. So this is the formula. We just have to compute it, but let me kind of make some sense out of this one more time. Here, when we count these 4 out of 52 cards, these are the 4 5s. Notice we're including the two red 5s right there, right? So keep that in mind. Now, 26 out of 52, these are all the red cards. 
keep in mind, out of these red cards, two of them will be fives, right? The red of diamonds, sorry, the red of diamonds, the, um, the five of diamonds and the five of hearts. Those are our two red fives. So see how we're counting the red fives here and here? That's why we've counted too much, and that's why we have to balance it out by subtracting them off. Okay. So just keep in mind what F intersect R stands for, cards that are in both, and you can probably figure out pretty easily, oh yeah, so the cards that are both fives and red, red fives, there's two of them, subtract off that two. So to finish this problem off, um, if you just combine all these fractions, add them all together, you should get 28 out of 52. And don't forget to reduce your probabilities, this reduces to 7 out of 13. Don't bother reducing till the end, just because obviously these all had common denominators, that makes it all much easier to deal with. So, so there you go, the probability of drawing either a 5 card or a red card is 7 out of 13. Uh, okay, page 665, number 10, another um, or probability here. It says if a single card is drawn from a standard 52 card deck, what is the probability that is either a face card or a red card? By the way, um, when you go to study for chapter 13 and everything, and you're seeing all these probability problems, you want to look for keywords, and the keyword for a union here is the or, right? If you see the probability of something or something, it probably means it's a union problem. So we're definitely going to start, um, well, we're going to start by naming our, our unions, or sorry, we're going to start by naming our events, and then we're going to find the probability of a union. So our events, we have a face card or a red card. Let's let F stand for drawing a face card. I'm just going to write face card. And then R for red card. So I'm writing this a little bit shorthand here, but F is technically the event that you draw a face card and R is the event that you draw a red card. And just like last time, we are looking to find the probability of F union R, right, because we want to know the probability of drawing a face card or a red card, and that or is your key for union. So the formula, probability of F plus probability of R minus the probability of F intersect R. Um, what is F intersect R? Let's just go ahead and start with that part. These are the cards that are both face cards and red. So they are the red face cards. Okay, let's keep that in mind. So let's go through and um, fill out the rest of these. So our probability equals the probability of F, which is the probability of drawing a face card. Let me remind you about the face cards. Those are the jacks, queens, and kings. So there's three face cards for each suit, and there's four suits. So three times four means there are 12 face cards. Okay. Uh, 12 face cards out of 52 cards. So again, that's the jack, queen, and king of diamonds, hearts, uh, spades, and clubs. There are 12 of them all together. So the probability of drawing one would just be 12 out of 52. Probability of drawing a red card, we already did that. Remember, there are 26 red cards out of 52 cards. And then minus, how many red face cards are there? Because that's what F intersect R stands for. Well, we know that there are 12 face cards, and we know that half of them are red cards, right? Half of, um, half of the cards are red in general. So that means there are six red face cards. Those six cards, by the way, are the jack, queen, and king of hearts, and the jack, queen, and king of diamonds, the six red cards. Red face cards. And that's it. That's our formula. So we're just going to crunch these numbers. And you should get 32 out of 52, which reduces to 8 out of 13. So you have an 8 out of 13 chance to draw either a face card or a red card when you go to draw a single card from a standard 52 card deck. So that's it for 13.2. Let me know if you have any questions and keep up the good work.